Hello people. So today I want to talk about distal radius fractures. So especially the theme is when are these fractures treated with immobilization and when are these fractures treated with uh, operation. So in the first case we will look at the fractures that are treated with uh, immobilization most of the time. So this is the distal radius and here is the ulna and here are the carpal bones. So the distal radius often we can see a fracture in this side. Um, the distal radius fracture that is here present is of simple fracture. So we see a simple fracture line and we see that these two fragments are not dislocated. The radius uh, is in its anatomical position. There is no shortening of the radius. And this is the AP view. If we look at the lateral view, we see that here is the fracture site and we see that the fragments are not dislocated. We also see that this articular surface of the radius, so this one, is pointing to the palm of the hand. So this would be the palm of the hand and this articular surface is pointing to the palm of the hand. So if we look here, here would be this surface and this pointing to the palm of the hand. This is very important because this is the normal anatomical position. And if we have a fracture like here, this is a simple fracture line with no dislocation of fracture fragments and everything else looks normal. There are no other involvements of the ulna, the carpal bones. This is a fracture that will definitely be treated with cast. So uh, there is no uh, other uh, method. This is the best method to treat this fracture. So you would put a cast on and in four weeks of immobilization in 19 more percent, this fracture hears very well. There are also other possibilities. So uh, we can have a simple fracture, but there could be dislocation. So the radius could be uh, shortened. It could uh, sink down because of, of osteoporotic bone of uh, because of the fracture. It could be fall. It could fall down a little bit. It could shorten. This articular surface could therefore be dislocated. It could face upwards or dorsally. And in this, these cases, the surgeon, the uh, orthopedic surgeon, <coughs> could uh, try a reposition. So he would numb this region. He would give medicine from dorsally into this. It is, that's called a hematoma block. He would give a numbing medicine into this uh, fracture site and then he would try a reposition under an uh, under a x-ray machine. If he can get this uh, reposition to be stable in this anatomical position, this dislocated simple fracture, a simple dislocated fracture that is well repositioned, can also be treated with cast. So a cast for four weeks. These fractures that are not dislocated or repositioned and stable can be treated with casts and mostly heal in four weeks. So this is the first possibility, so non-operative treatment. The second possibility is obviously the operative one. So we see that this fracture is much more complicated. It has more fracture lines, it has more fragments, and in most of the cases, when the fracture has multiple fragments, these fragments, I will say it like this, they fly off, they go their way, they are pulled by other structures, and they are dis dislocated more than this. Also, this was an extra articular fracture. There was no joint involvement. We see here, there is joint involvement, the fracture is going into the joint. This, if this is dislocated more than one to two millimeters, this joint fracture, if it is dislocated more than one to two millimeters, it is treated operatively. Also, 
multiple fragments that are dislocated are unstable and are mostly not well <clears throat> suited for repos reposition and if we want to put the bone together we need to do an operation so dislocation of bone fragments multiple bone fragments a complicated fractures interarticular fractures also here we see that the other bones are involved the distal ulna ulna has also a fracture it can be that the radius that the uh, scaphoid bone has also uh, a fracture and in these cases obviously in order to get a better functional result an operation would be needed <clears throat> if we look on the lateral view we see how the uh, the surface of the radius the articular surface is not facing the palmar side of the hand so this side uh, it is facing dorsally and this, if it cannot be repositioned to be stable, needs to be operated. So because of the fracture, the radius has shortened and there is a dislocation. So in these cases where we have significant dislocation, multifragmental, uh, unstable fractures, other bone, bone involvement, intraarticular fractures that are greater than this, in these cases, obviously, an operative management needs to be uh, uh, needs to be considered. Obviously, uh, <clears throat> if we compare these two, we see that we have cases where we never would do operative management, so undislocated simple fractures, and we have cases where we would always do operative management, complicated multifragmental uh, fractures, but there are gray zones and there are cases uh, that prove to us that every fracture of the distal radius uh, can be similar but the patients are not and every fracture needs to be treated individually because for example you can have a, a complicated fracture but for example the patient had a stroke and he doesn't use uh, this arm and the arm uh, does not have any significant function. He fell and broke and had a, a fracture that we would normally operate. But because the patient doesn't need the arm, he is not using it, we can treat this also. We can try to reposition it as best as we can, put it in the cast only uh, for it to heal. It will heal, it will not cause the pain, uh, pain for the patient. But as, as it was not functional before, the function is not uh, important after either. So besides this fracture and the elements of the fracture, there are also other things like comorbidities, bone quality, the patient's... Uh, the patient himself if we want if he wants an operation or not so all of these things needs to be con need 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 to be uh, considered uh, once we uh, want to uh, differentiate if this uh, will be treated with immobilization and cast or with an operation and even though this story sounds uh, complicated uh, in praxis, this is done very fast, and these things with experienced surgeons are done, are determined very fast. In the cases where we have these simple fractures that can be treated with immobilization, we have mostly very good outcomes, good healing, and in the cases where we have complicated uh, fractures that require operative management, it all depends. As the fractures get complicated, as they involve the joint and more uh, bones, obviously the functional result after the operation will be lower. So this is a comparison between what is mostly uh, not operated and what is operated. Thank you.